Hey guys, welcome to Elevated Systems. I'm your host CJ, and a few months ago I took a look at some budget CPU air coolers in the $20 to $30 price range like this Vetro V5. Today I'll also be looking at a couple of budget coolers, but slightly bigger coolers for a slightly bigger budget. This is the Scythe Mugen 5 Black Edition and the Enermax ETS F40 ARGB Edition, and these CPU air tower coolers fall into the $50 to $60 price range. So today we're going to look at the specs and features of these coolers, what makes them more expensive than this, and of course we'll see how they actually perform. Let's do this. All right, let's start with the specs and features of each of these coolers. First, the Scythe Mugen 5 Black Edition. This air tower measures 136 millimeters wide by 110 millimeters deep by 154.5 millimeters high. The heat sink includes six heat pipes and a nickel plated copper cold plate and a fin density of approximately 11 fins per inch. The cooler has an offset design to accommodate standard ATX memory configurations and has a fin cutout on the backside to accommodate higher end quad channel motherboard configurations, allowing for RAM up to 55 millimeters tall on the rear side of the socket. The cooler comes equipped with a black Kaze Flex 120 millimeter PWM fan that has a RPM range of 300 to 1500 RPM, producing a max airflow of 66.47 cubic feet per minute and a maximum static pressure of 1.67 millimeters H2O. The Enermax ETS F40 ARGB edition measures 140 millimeters wide by 90.5 millimeters deep by 158 millimeters high. The heat sink includes four direct contact heat pipes and a fin density of 11 fins per inch. The cooler has an offset design allowing for uninterrupted memory configurations and is narrow enough not to impact quad channel memory layouts. The cooler is fitted with an Enermax AFS40 ARGB 140mm PWM fan that has a speed range of 300 to 1200 RPM, producing a max airflow of 74.33 CFM and a static pressure of 2.17mm H2O. And of course RGB. The fan and the top cover plate have integrated RGB elements. Additionally, some other engineering design elements of the ETS F40 include each fin having tabs stamped into it to cause turbulence in the airflow. Enermax calls it vortex generation flow, but it theoretically should assist in the convection or transfer of heat from the fins to the air. Also to ensure the turbulent air flows completely through the fins, the side of the heat sink are closed off. The Scythe cooler relies more on mass for its cooling. Despite being 120 millimeter cooler, the Mugen 5 only has five less fins than the 140 millimeter Enermax, and the fins are about 10 millimeters deeper than the Enermax. There's also no RGB, which may or may not be a selling point. I personally like the look of the Mugen 5, all blacked out with the silver scythe logo and the stylish caps on the ends of the heat pipes. So moving on to what makes these 50 and $60 coolers as opposed to 20 to $30 coolers like the Vetro V5. Well, again, it's mass. Larger coolers, more aluminum, more copper means more money. It's just that simple. But let's get to the most important question. What kind of cooling performance does that extra money get you? So I tested the coolers on an open air test bench consisting of a Ryzen 7 3700X at its stock core clocks and power limits. 16 gigabytes of DDR4 memory running at 3600 megahertz CL16 on an Asus Prime X570 Pro motherboard. If you're interested in my testing methodology, you can check out the video here or the link in the description should take you to a detailed explanation of how I test CPU coolers. Now, the results. First, with the system at idle, both coolers performed basically identically to each other, averaging just 8.8 .8 and 8.6 degrees above ambient, both having peak temps of 20 degrees Celsius Delta T. 
at load, the coolers also had identical max or peak temps of 48 Celsius, and the Enermax was able to maintain average temperatures about one degree lower than the Scythe. But let's see how these more expensive coolers compare to some more budget-friendly models. Do you get what you pay for? And first we see that at idle, the bigger coolers are able to keep the CPU up to 47% cooler on average. And at load, the pricier coolers cut up to almost 14 degrees off average temps and 18 degrees from peak temps. Looking at noise levels, both coolers are virtually silent at idle. However, despite its vortex generation flow, the Enermax was almost 8% quieter at full load, which is due to the 140 millimeter fan. Larger fans are quieter. Now, the biggest advantage of these coolers over the cheaper models is you can get more aggressive with overclocking. I don't even test overclocking temps on the cheaper coolers. For these, I dialed in a 4.4 gigahertz all-core OC at 1.4 volts, which is about the max for my 3700X, and I ran the stress test but just once for each cooler, and the Enermax passed the 10-minute test with an average temp of 65.5 degrees above ambient. Now, it did pass, but just barely. The actual CPU temp did peak at 95 degrees, which is the limit for the 3700X. The Scythe cooler didn't pass, however. At about eight or nine minutes in, the peak temp hit 96 degrees and the CPU did its job and shut the system down. However, Scythe did send me a second Kaze Flex 120 millimeter fan, so I strapped it onto the cooler so I had a push-pull configuration and I ran the overclock test again and this time it passed, but just barely with average temps of 68.7 degrees above ambient and actual CPU temps did also peak at 95 degrees. Now, I also tested the scythe with the second fan with the CPU at stock settings, but after three test runs, there was statistically no difference in temps. However, there was definitely a significant rise in noise. I'd say that other than for the symmetrical aesthetics, adding a second fan isn't really worth it as at normal operating temps a single fan is already achieving peak cooling efficiency despite the thickness of the fin stack now it's important to keep in mind that the a to 64 stress test is worst possible case for the cpu and these coolers i mean it's slamming the cpu with a workload that's way more stressful than anything you'd encounter in real world workloads unless maybe you're a 3d artist or animator so final thoughts on these two coolers which one if any comes out on top well as far as ease of installation they both install pretty much identically and very simply but the scythe does come with a screwdriver so i'm gonna have to give them a point for that one as far as design and aesthetics the Enermax does have the addressable RGB, so if you like RGB, there's that, but I do need to note that there isn't any type of RGB controller included, so you need to plug the RGB cable either directly into a 5 volt ARGB header on your motherboard or a compatible RGB controller in your system if you have one. I do like the extra engineering of the Enermax, the Vortex tab, this and the closed sides, and they do seem like they worked. However, aesthetically, I prefer the Scythe cooler. I like the classy look of the heat pipe caps, and it's beefier and fills up more space right in the center of a system. But again, that's just personal preference. The Enermax also wins on noise or, well, lack of it. Now let's get to the most important metrics and that's price to performance. And here, the Enermax does come out on top. While it only outperformed the Scythe by a single degree Celsius, it does it for $10 less coming in at $49.99 compared to the $59.99 US dollar price tag on the Mugen 5. Now, each of these do come in different flavors. The Mugen 5 Revision B is the non-black version and costs $49.99, while the ETS F40 comes in 
black and white ARGB versions, as well as a black non-RGB model and an unfinished version. I'm, I'm not 100% sure of the price of the latter two of those. In any case, either of these coolers is a solid option for a higher core count CPU like the 3700X and can handle PBO settings easily and even some overclocking. But let me know which one you prefer in the comments below. Also, before you click away to one of my other videos that'll pop up in the end screen, be sure to hit that like and maybe consider subscribing. I hope to see you in the next one. Until then, stay safe.